Hey guys, Omak446 Productions here, and in today's video we're going to be discussing a brand new topic, that being, what if the Saiyans came to Earth early? If you enjoyed this video, please like, and if you enjoy my content, please subscribe, as these would take a, take a very long time to make. Now, without any further delay, let's begin. So we're going to start our story off where we see Raditz, Vegeta and Nappa on a mission on an, on an unknown planet in Dragon Ball Super Broly. I'm not going to include the other scenes that were with the trio in the Broly movie, as as far as I'm aware, nothing is told about them, so they won't be in the story at all. Anyways, Raditz and Vegeta are discussing whether there are any Saiyan survivors other than themselves in the universe, and it hits Raditz. He remembers his mother telling him that herself and Bardock sent his little brother Kakron away in a space pod to a planet called Earth. In the movie, Raditz brushes this off as he knows that Kakron is very weak, but in this story he wants to go and get his brother uh, as he is all the family that he, he has left. Raditz tells Vegeta that he wants to go and get his brother and recruit him into their squadron. Vegeta agrees to this as it would be great to have more Saiyans on their team and orders Nappa and Raditz to, to set course for Earth. This journey will take around one year. I'm going to say that for the year of travelling, Gohan raises Goku and the night that Goku would originally transform into a great and kill Gohan, the Saiyan squadron arrives just in time. While Goku is a great ape, the Saiyan's pods land near Mount Pauzu, serving as a distraction to Goku. Great ape Goku runs towards the crash, leaving Grandpa Gohan alive. The three Saiyans exit their pods to see the great ape. Goku is about to attack, but the Saiyans all look at the moon and begin to mutate. The young Goku is easily taken care of by great ape Nappa with a quick twist of the tail, sending the great ape Goku falling to his knees, sending shockwaves throughout the planet. Goku then falls asleep. Before Raditz can cause any destruction, as he can't control his great ape form, Nappa sends a giant mouth beam directly at the moon, just like Piccolo did in, in early Dragon Ball Z, and the four Saiyans turn back to their normal states. Nappa grabs the, mm, Nappa grabs the young Kakarot by his hair and, and, and throws him to Raditz, and the Saiyans return to their pods. Kakarot goes into Raditz's pod, and as he is small, sits on Raditz's lap. Vegeta is trying to remember what planet his brother Turbo was sent to, but has no clue. Although he doesn't want to, it comes to him having uh, having to contact the Freezer Force and ask for Tarbo's whereabouts. It's not said the name of Tarbo's planet in the special he is featured in, so I'm gonna make up a name, say Planet Visha, just made up name. <laughs> Vegeta is told by a Freezer soldier that Tarbo was sent to Planet Visha. Vegeta thanks the soldier, tells Nap and Raditz the coordinates, and they're off. This journey will take around six months. When the Saiyans arrive, they are met by very, ang very angry Vesharian soldiers aiming what looks to be some sort of weapons at, at them. The Saiyans slowly exit their pods, including Kakarot. Oh, and by the way, I'm not gonna be calling. I mean, I'm gonna be calling Go Kakarot from now on in the story, just because it makes far more sense. And it would be pretty stupid of me to carry on calling him Goku as no one else in the story would call him Goku. The prince would begin to laugh at them and orders Nappa, Raditz and Kakra to stand back and demolishes the four soldiers with a big bang attack. One soldier barely managed to survive the attack, but is then grabbed by the throat by Nappa who then asks him where is Tarbo. The soldier tells him that he has no idea who, who, who he is talking about. So Nappa then proceeds to squash the soldier's neck as if it were a form of stress ball. Vegeta and Nappa proceed to scan for Tarbo's pod while Raditz puts Kakarot in their pod, as Kakarot can't fly yet and would just hold them back. After that, Raditz would join up with the others in scanning for Tarbo's pod. After about two and a half hours of scanning all around the planet, the same group locate a Freezer Force craft which is without a doubt Tarbo's. The trio fly down towards the pod and Vegeta is happy to see that the infant is asleep. So Vegeta sets Tarbo's pod's coordinates for the planet that they were on, that being the one we see on in Dragon Ball Super Broly. After that, the team head back to their own pods and shoot off back into space. Their journey back would take six more months. 
When they arrive, as expected, Tarbell arrived from before they did. Tarbell is already out of his pod and munching on, on an alien's leg. The same team join him and they all have a hearty feast. The following day, Nappa takes it, up, takes it upon himself to train Tarbell and Kakarot. It disgusts him seeing two weak Saiyans. Nappa puts them through similar training to what Piccolo did with Gohan. I say that because Nappa put them both in a, in a jungle for six months to build their survival skills and power levels. And this could also build a very powerful attack duo. Nappa informs Vegeta and Riot on what he's done with the boys and they're fine with it. If it means they'll have five strong warriors in their squad instead of three, it doesn't matter how it's done. But just to make sure they're okay and not dead, Nappa will drop by once a month to check on them. Every month that goes by, Kakarot and Tarp will get immensely stronger. After these long six months had passed, Nappa, Nappa began to train the kids. He taught them basic key control and, and how to fly as they did not know how to do either yet. Nappa became a father figure to the boys and after a while Raditz and Vegeta jo joined him with the training. Raditz, Vegeta and Nappa got stronger by abusing the Saiyan Zenkai boost by doing 2v1 matches, but the one on their own would not punch back and get very injured. Whereas Tarbo and Kakarot would do light sparring with each other as they would probably be killed in a 2v1 with the older Saiyans. And I think that's a good place to end the video for now. If you enjoyed this video, show me that you did by, sh by smashing the like button. And if you want me to continue this series, tell me in the comments below along with any, and I mean any future what if ideas or any videos you want to see from me in future. Thanks for watching, bye for now guys, see you later. <laughs>